After returning from his 10 minute cruise to the cosmos in what can only be described as a giant metal penis, Jeff Bezos has set his sights on an even bigger challenge, immortality. Not that that's anything new, the secret to everlasting life has been a human obsession for millennia. Nowadays, technologies like gene therapy and bionic limbs that were once confined to the realms of science fiction are firmly established medical treatments. Deadly diseases can be cured by popping a few pills and we can use electricity to bring back cardiac arrest patients. But so far, we still haven't found a cure for the biggest killer of all, old age. Every single day, 150,000 people die around the world, and about two thirds of these deaths are from old age or conditions related to aging. But what actually happens to us biochemically when we get old? Our bodies are made up of trillions of cells, tiny molecular factories that carry out all of the essential processes that we need to stay alive. And these processes are powered by complex chemical reactions that provide us with the energy and cellular machinery to keep these little factories going. The problem is these chemical reactions can produce dangerous waste products that can damage the instructions that keep everything in your body ticking along, your DNA. Of the 30 trillion cells that make up your body, around 330 billion of them are replaced every single day. This happens through a process called cell division, where the cell copies the DNA that's inside it and splits in half to produce two identical new ones. But each cell can only divide a set number of times before it gets worn out. When you're young, your body quickly spots these worn out cells and removes them before they can cause any damage and any problem. But as we get older, this molecular mop up becomes less efficient and the zombie cells begin to accumulate. And it's this inflammation which is responsible for a range of different age-related conditions like heart disease, arthritis and Alzheimer's. If we could get rid of all of these spent cells artificially, this age-related inflammation would become much less of a problem. There are several drugs being tested to do just that, and one you might have heard of is called rapamycin, a drug that is currently given to transplant patients to help stop their bodies rejecting their shiny new donor organs. Now it's also been shown to slow the progression of multiple age-associated diseases like Alzheimer's and Huntington's, and it's even looking like it might be an effective treatment against certain types of cancer. But we've still got a long way to go before this drug starts being sold in your local boots or pharmacy. Having too much of it could have devastating effects on a person's immune system, which is definitely not what you want if you're planning on staying alive for a very long time and disease free. There's even the possibility of using microscopic nanobots to seek out these zombie cells and just knock them out there and then, or even replace damaged bits of DNA. Admittedly, this sounds pretty sci-fi, but a lot of the technology is already there and it's expected that within the next decade, these miniature medics will be swarming to surgeries in a hospital near you. Right, so as it stands, we can't safely make our cells immortal, but we can weed out the old crappy ones. And once we've done that, our bodies need to find a way of replacing them. Enter stem cells, cells that haven't decided what they want to be when they grow up yet. Stem cells can develop into lots of different cell types, so they're really important for repairing and replacing damaged tissues. Unfortunately, as we age, the number of these stem cells in our body starts to decline, and those that are left eventually become less effective for their job. So why don't we just transplant new healthy stem cells from young donors into elderly patients? I mean, the technology is already there. Wouldn't it be great if we could just coax our mature, specialized cells into becoming blank canvas stem cells once again? Now this is where cellular reprogramming comes in, an exciting new technology that exposes specialized adult body cells to a cocktail of chemicals that encourage them to revert to their immature stem cell state. It's like wiping them back to factory settings. Some researchers are even taking this idea one step further and are trying to grow whole organs from these stem cells as an alternative to organ transplantation. But unless you want to totally repurpose the cells, you don't actually have to rewind their molecular clocks back all the way back. For example, if you wanted to keep your skin cell as a skin cell, but you just wanted to behave like a younger skin cell, you can stop the cellular reprogramming process halfway through. 
enough to get rid of the molecular signs of aging, but without entirely erasing the cell's identity. It's this sort of technology that underlies one of Jeff Bezos' most recent investments, funding for a new biotech company called Altos Labs, which is looking to reverse the aging process through cellular rejuvenation. It's not a totally unnatural idea either. Granted, it's not natural in humans, but some animals have evolved similar mechanisms. Take the immortal jellyfish, a creature that can literally reverse its life cycle when the environment gets too harsh. Okay, so Bezos might be onto something here, but what about some of the wackiest wages the super rich have made to get their hands on the elixir of life? There's a rumor doing the rounds on social media that the global elites have been conspiring together to kidnap and torture young children with the aim of harvesting their blood the and injecting it into their own veins in an attempt to live forever. Sounds pretty far-fetched, but there is some science behind it. Well, at least behind the blood transfusion bit. See, there are certain molecules in young blood that seems to improve brain and heart function and increase muscle strength by repairing cellular damage. You can even get your hands on some of it from startups like Ambrosia, although it will set you back at least $8,000 a liter. Anti-aging research is still in its early stages, but what if you've not got much time left? If you could only just freeze your body until scientists found a way to cheat the aging process and essentially cure death. Well, there's a startup for that too, several of them. For 200,000 pounds, the Alcor Life Extension Foundation offers a full body freezing service to preserve your body in cold storage until the day when technology has advanced enough to let you live forever. This technique is called cryonics and it's thought that over 250 people are already being stored in freezers around the world, waiting to come back to life like Rip Van Winkle. The first person to ever be frozen like this was a guy called James Bedford in 1967 and his body has remained in cold storage to this day, although it's starting to look a little worse for the wear. 220 degrees below zero centigrade. Big question for you. Would you consider uploading your brain to a computer if it meant you could live forever? Sounds pretty far-fetched, but they're looking into it. Research is already underway to figure out how to convert human consciousness into digital code, artificially capturing your brain's entire neural network into computer software. Projects like Elon Musk Neuralink are already taking steps towards developing the first human brain machine interfaces, but if your mind was uploaded as a digital copy, would it still be you? There are lots of cool ideas out there, but for most of us, the price tags that come with these ventures are totally out of reach. So what can you do to increase your chances of living long enough to see any of these dreams becoming a reality? Okay, so your average global life expectancy is 73.4 years, although this number varies considerably depending on where in the world you live. It's particularly high in the world's blue zones, places where people are 10 times more likely to make it to 100 than your average American or Brit, where the average life expectancy is in the high 70s. These blue zones are spread all across the world in Greece, Costa Rica, Italy, California, and Japan, and their inhabitants all have very different cultures and lifestyles. So what's their secret? Perhaps the biggest one is diet. The food itself is very different, but each blue zone diet is notably low on meat and high on fruit and veg. They all eat a lot of beans, and there's a fair amount of tea drinking too, which is thought to reduce inflammation. Another key feature of the Blue Zones is that they have strong communities, and we all know that social connections is important for our mental and physical well-being, but it's also important for reducing stress and reducing cortisol, which thus reduces inflammation. Okinawa in particular is considered to be the healthiest place on Earth. Ingrained in their culture are the concepts of Moai, a tribe, lifelong friends, and a powerful social support network, and Ikigai, a strong sense of purpose in life. He might not have the same physical strength he once had. That gives you a reason to wake up in the morning, a, a driving force for daily life. But he still has a role to play. Their purpose-imbued lives gives them clear roles of responsibility and feelings of being needed well into their hundreds. The Okinawan diet is rich in fermented foods, which contribute to a healthy intestinal ecology and offer even better nutritional benefits. Older Okinawans are active walkers and gardeners. The Okinawan household has very little furniture. 
residents take meals and relax sitting on tatami mats on the floor. And the fact that old people get up and down off the floor several dozen times a day builds lower body strength and balance which helps protect against dangerous falls. In today's society, many people find their purpose in making money and with the help of investment from the world's billionaires, what used to be science fiction is now becoming a reality, but it will come at a cost. And I'm not just talking about the money here. If more people live past 100, it will be even harder to supply food, homes and opportunities for younger generations. Then there's the question of who can access these up and coming treatments and who will be left behind. For now, the best thing you can do is look after your body, stick to a largely plant based diet and try to keep your stress levels low. Maintaining strong social bonds is all also really important and while spending more time with your mates isn't going to make you live forever, it's a good place to start.